tricks for a simple budget, how to simplify your finances this week on the Extreme Personal Finance Show. Hey, everyone. My name is Chris. And joining me, my co-host this week, Dan. Dan, how's it going, buddy? Hello. It's going well. How are you? I'm I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Fantastic. Yeah, we are. Uh, we're um, we're in different spots this week. <laughs> um, and I want to kind of hear you. Actually, are taking a little uh, midweek vacation. Where are you? A little bit. We're up in Park Rapids, Minnesota, off of. Uh, well, there's I think a thousand lakes right around here. So I'm not sure which one we're at, but yeah, I found a little Airbnb just taking a couple of days vacation here in the summer using the, the warm weather while we have it. Right. Awesome. Right. Yeah. We, <laughs> you got to take advantage of that because <laughs> we don't get very many nice days. Either it's wicked hot, super humid, or it's 20 below. So yeah, one of the two. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So this week, uh, again, I want to jump into something, you know, you and I have talked uh, off and on and you brought it up last week about kind of how important budgeting um, should be or or could be to somebody's finances. And so I want to kind of go through because when I first kind of discovered personal finance, budgeting was super overwhelming and scary to me. Like I didn't you know, I, I, I literally Googled, you know, how to budget. And that's when I started to learn, you know, the Dave Ramsey way and on all these other different types of, of budgeting methods. And there's kind of a lot out there. And so I want us to kind of just talk through ways that we can make it easier for people. Um, if they're a little overwhelmed and maybe a little scared on, on, um, you know, how to budget. I know many people think that, well, I don't want to budget. I don't like budgeting because it's so restrictive. Mm -hmm, but right. in so, in some ways, it may be freeing because then you kind of know where the money is going to go and know what you can spend on, right? Absolutely. Freeing, uh, empowering is one of the words that I, I ah. think of. It's just like, granted, de depending a little bit on where you're at in your financial journey, um, maybe it's more empowering for others. Um, but you'll get there, you know, and I think budgeting is one of those things that, that helps you progress from just starting out to now you're really rolling and you've got everything working to a point where you then are, you know, living with a little bit more abundance because you've kind of taken that path of not really sure what I'm doing, getting a handle on it, and then just cruising later on. So that's awesome. Yeah. It's almost like when, once you start using a, a budget, some sort of budget, regardless of what method we talk about, which we're going to be talking through a few different kinds here, it kind of moves you from that fixed mindset to more of a growth mindset. Right. Absolutely. Um, so I guess, uh, like I mentioned, I mean, one of the things that when I first started, it was scary, overwhelming. Um, will I have enough? Um, and also, you know, how do I categorize things? How detailed do I need to get? Um, it was kind of scary. And, and when I started researching it, there was so many different kinds, right? There's um, a 50, 30, 20 budget. There's uh, a couple well-known bloggers and, and, um, personal finance experts out there talk about like the anti-budget. Um, and there's also, um, you're, you're smirking because you know who I'm talking about. Uh, and then, but there's also one that's probably, I would say probably one of the most common ones we hear about, and that's zero-based budgeting. Um, right. At least that's what I what I felt. And so we're going to kind of go through a little bit of each of these. And I also want to just hear from you. If, you were, if you're new to budgeting, how would you kind of help people or coach people along just to get started? What's some of the very first steps you would, you would recommend? I think the first step I would say with getting started is it's not going to be perfect. Whatever you end up with the first time is not going to be what you stick with. It's going to change. So, so it's because it's the right? first time you've done it, you know? So yeah, you're going to, you're going to make the budget. You're going to see how things go a week later, a month later, however long time frame you're looking at, you're going to look at the product that you had, say, okay, what went well? What do I wish I'd done a little bit differently? And then do that differently, right? And then keep the things that went well. Um, the idea of saying, all right, I got to start budgeting and everything's going to be perfect from day one is, is almost setting yourself up for failure because it's not going to be perfect from day one. So yeah. you'll get two weeks into it and be like, well, budgeting doesn't work. I just give up and 
I think you can't do I think that. that yeah, I think that's what a lot, a lot I think that's what happens a lot, right? And I think that's why people like I remember one time my daughter, uh one of my one of my girls, I remember she had a nannying job for the summer and she was making like wicked a lot of cash. Like it was it was awesome. And she had um she was moving money like from her savings into her checking account a lot right she would she would get paid from this uh this nannying job she would deposit and then she came to me one day and she was like you know i I just i continually are transferring money to cover the expenses and i'm like all right well let's sit down and kind of take a look and so we 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 looked at her uh basically you know we logged into her account looked online and saw her transactions and it was Jimmy John's, Jimmy John's, Taco Bell, Wendy's. It was, <laughs> it was, you know, and I kind of talked to her about, it. I'm like, you know, you live here and I'm buying groceries right now. You could make a sandwich, <laughs> right. you know, but, uh, and Learn so I was something a little more interesting even, you know, honestly. exactly. Those are and, my skills uh, too. Yeah, it is. It is. But I remember it was funny. I said, well, one thing you could do is you could give me your check card. <laughs> and she's like, well, I don't know. Like maybe I don't <laughs> want to do that, but uh, it was one of those things again. You know, understanding where your money's going to go. But let's let's talk about one of the first. Um, again, one of the budgets that that often comes up when you're kind of looking at getting started. And this is this fifty thirty twenty budget. That's the first one I want to talk about. This is where you set aside a percentage of, um, basically of your take home pay, a percentage of that take home pay into kind of three different buckets. And those buckets are 50% goes to like your needs, right? So needs such as like rent and mortgage utilities, that type of thing. 30% goes to the wants. So streaming services for me, it was like concert tickets or, or stuff like that. And then 20% would go towards, you know, paying off your debts or investing or something like that. Um, I want to hear your thoughts on this 50, 30, 20 budget. And most importantly also, is there something I think, I mean, maybe that's a whole separate episode of a podcast is really understanding what are those needs versus wants? Because if you talk to my 22 year old, <laughs> that's way different. <laughs> right. Yeah. We, we got to blur those lines between needs and wants. And then to a certain extent, the the savings category, is it short-term savings or long-term savings? And Good point. You know, maybe you're like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm saving 20%. It's like, well, how much of that is 20% for like retirement? Oh, 2% because the rest of it's right now. It's like, okay, well, 2% isn't going to cut it. So it leaves yourself open to, uh, to misinterpreting what your numbers actually are because you're not granular enough. Um, and then to that point too, you know, 50% needs, well, if my needs only cover 30%, do I start inflating my needs because I'm supposed to spend 50% on needs? So it's just, it's a ballpark to start from, you know, yeah. it's just like kind of get it close and then, and then see where you're at, you know, after a month or two and, and then be able to adjust. But, you know, kind of, I mean, I guess, spoiler alert there a little bit, you know, the 50, 30, 20, I, I don't know if it's granular enough, at least for people who are getting started, you know, cause if the whole idea is to find out where your money is going and it's just this ambiguous 50% for, for needs, it's like, well, okay. Sure, <laughs> How accurate sure. is that though? So um, I'm a, I'm a granular kind of person. I like to kind of stick with it that way. I still do now, you know, six, seven years of doing budgeting. Um, that doesn't mean everybody's got to do it that way. Uh, but I do think at least starting off, you know, have that little bit of uh, uh, discipline determination to like, at least for a little bit, I got to find out like your Jimmy John's talk about all those restaurants you're talking about. It's like, yeah, all right, where are all these ones that you're going to? Um, and where's all that, that money going a little bit, a little bit more specific than just those broad categories. Yeah. You know, I think it would be fun one of these days for you and I to compare our categories. <laughs> Let's well, do that so one of these days. <laughs> we could do that, but I think going going back even still to what we were talking about before, um, Aaron, Aaron and I, our categories still change a little bit because we're like, do we still need that category? Does that category fit in our in our life today, or is that something that maybe we've I don't want to say graduated out of, but just like 
you know, having a, a, a young family and as they sure. grow, maybe this thing that we were budgeting for is just not a category that we have anymore. And so we change it, you know, or maybe yeah. we see a couple other categories that are just too similar enough that we just kind of combine those into one going forward. So um, it'd be a fun exercise for a point in time to kind of see how we're tracking things, but yeah. it's still something where, you know, a year later that could look a little bit different and that's okay. This is the important thing to keep, take from that too. Absolutely. And one thing, um, one thing I do want to mention too, before we get too far down this path is again, you know, if you're just starting out budgeting, um, knowing that, uh, there's so many tools out there, so many apps out there, so many different um, apps and tools and websites and services. Um, just know that if you're just starting, you don't have, like try not to get overwhelmed with all the different options out there. You can start with literally a notebook, right? Like a piece yep. of paper, just writing that stuff down and um, you know, setting aside like how much you're going to budget for a particular category. And then, you know, start with what that take-home pay is or, um, because I, again, that's how I started, right? So when I first started, it literally was just, um, I went and grabbed an old, uh, you know, I had a, a stack of old school supplies. There was a old beat up notebook in there with <laughs> ruled paper on it. And I started writing stuff down and that really did start to help when you visualized everything all at once. That was before I, I joined some of those aggregate services out there. I was using Mint for a number of years, probably you know, six, seven years. I know you're a fan of YNAB. I don't know if you want to quick mention that tool. Sure. YNAB, uh, you need a budget. It's gosh, we started on that one. All, maybe a year after we were doing budget, I tried to Excel spreadsheet for a little bit and it worked fine. Um, but YNAB just, it worked with the way that my brain works, um, whether it was on purpose or I'm just able to manipulate the tool that way. Um, we'll get into this later, but we do, um, month ahead budgeting, which my, my opinion is what, if you're, if you're going to do budgeting, you're like, yep, I'm in it. We're going to do budgeting. You can work yourself up to that month ahead budgeting, which we can go into detail later. Um, super easy, makes it so simple. And it goes from really less of a tracking and more of a planning. Got I always, it. I think of budgeting as a planning tool rather than a tracking tool by itself. You know, there some tracking does come involved, get involved. Um, but it's after you've created your budget. So yep. planning my spending and then I track and make sure that what life is, is they, they line up. And if they don't see if the next month's budget needs to adjust a little bit, but so awesome. yeah, big yep. fan of YNAB. Uh, I like their, um, they've got four rules that make it very simple too. I don't know all of them verbatim off the top of my head, but one of the big ones I know is roll with the punches, which I think is, uh, is very key with with budgeting it's like if one category didn't have enough money into it it's okay it, you might have spent less than another one and just slide things around it's all right so right you know you said something really important there i said you, know, you mentioned that you, the current tool you use it works well for you and the way your mind works and i think that's something i want people to really get out of this is the fact that you might need to try a few right figure out what works best for you i think you said something very important uh, even before we started recording was as long as it's a tool that's going to get you to use it, that's the tool you need yeah. to use. Right. So <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. The, the tool, the thing that works for your mind, the thing that gets you going. And, and I feel like maybe it's just something that some people do in order to uh, create clicks and likes and views or whatnot. But I feel like most budgets are more similar than they are different. Yet some people try to make it sound like they're vastly different and you need to follow the one that they do. Um, so the way I look at it, at least for personal finance, you know, we're not talking like big business projection, billions of dollars, not that, right? Sure. But personal finance budgeting, um, there's all these different kinds, you know, the anti-budget, the Ramit Sethi has got his uh, conscious spending plan it makes you feel better about not having a budget doing that it's, it's still a budget um it's you put numbers in a spreadsheet and you got to figure out what those numbers are to make your percent your budgeting it's right. it's okay it's yep. but but if you won't do budgeting because it's called budgeting great don't call it that call it a spending plan call it a conscious spending plan call it whatever you want as long as you do it right yep. but really when it all comes down to it 
they really are zero based budgeting. But I think quote unquote, when people think zero based budgeting, it is that very granular, granular, like we talked about. Yeah. But if you're the anti-budget, right, where it's you, know, you decide how much you're going to save, call it 20% and how much you're going to spend 80%. Well, you've now assigned 20% to saving and 80% to everything else. You now have 0% left over. You have done zero based budgeting. That's right. That's whether, right. Whether you wanted to or not, that's what, that's what happens. That's right. So, and I, you're absolutely right. I think when I start to think of, and that's one of the, probably one of the most popular budgeting methods that um, at least I came across when I started researching how to do it. And the zero based budgeting, this is a, a method where you basically assign every dollar a particular purpose, right? So an example, you know, this, I always, I always compare this in my brain as kind of an envelope system, right? Dave Ramsey is really popular like this envelope system, or imagine you have an envelope dedicated to each of these spending categories, right? So like rent, food, car repairs, movies, dining out, whatever. And then to make sure that your income minus what you spend equals zero. So do you feel as though, um, do you feel as though zero-based budgeting or, or kind of what you talked about there, is that a good place for people to start? Or, or let me, let me, you, men <laughs> you mentioned, you know, there are other methods out there, like you mentioned kind of that, that forward budgeting, right? The method that you yes. kind of, that you like to do. Maybe you want to talk a little bit more about that and why that works for sure. you. Well, so month ahead budgeting is going to be trickier for some people to start there because okay. what, what it in what it takes to do that is you have to have an entire month's worth of income, not expenses, income ahead of time. So not everybody that is decides, you know, I gotta get my financial life together, I gotta start budgeting, is gonna have an entire month of income in reserves set aside to be able to do it. So sure. for, I think for a lot of people that is a, a goal to aspire to, but they may not be starting there. So I do think zero based. Um, is is a good place for people to start from, even if it's shorter time period. So if I have five hundred dollars at the beginning of the week, I need to look at what's coming up that week, maybe even that next two weeks, so I don't get caught by surprise on week two, right? And figure out what expenses are coming up, and of that money I have, you know, okay, this my my power bill is coming up, electricity bill is coming up, it's that much. I have this much for groceries, I have this much for gas this much for maybe a little bit of fun so I don't go crazy. Mm -hmm. And then everything else, here's a, here's a big secret to make budgeting easier, right? Just have a category that says stuff I forgot to budget for. <laughs> I love it. Because it, that's going to happen anyway, yes. right? There's, yes. Something is going to come like, ah, I forgot about uh, my phone bills due this month or right. whatever it is, right? But so, okay, so you put a little bit of money in this stuff I forgot to budget for. And then during week two, you've got that, that little bit of a buffer for, oh, okay, here's the thing that I forgot. Yeah. It, especially it in my, like when I first started um, budgeting too, it was those things that weren't, you know, you have those things that are maybe annual expenses. You mm -hmm. have those things that are six month expenses, maybe like only car insurance, but then also you have those weird ones, like some utilities that are three months, like my water bill and my garbage bill. And so all of a sudden it's like, oh crap, I, again, the thing I forgot to budget for. Can, so when you're starting, this will happen, right? So, absolutely. It, and it's okay. You just, you adjust and you move forward for the next month. So, yeah. And then that next month, when that happens, you know, right? If you're doing, say you're doing paper and pen, right? Paper and pen. Yeah. Write a little parenthesis happens quarterly. So then, and what quarters are those? Because I don't know about you, but I even have some of those quarterly bills that are a month shifted from each other. Mm -hmm. So, they don't, they happen quarterly, but not every, there's not all the same. So it's like, all right, right, this one happens quarterly in May, in May, this one happens quarterly in June. So I got to track those then going forward from that. So it's kind of a pain in the neck, but yeah, you just write it down, be like, oh, this is that thing that I forgot. And then you just put it in your notes and move forward from there. So the next time as you're budgeting, it's, and then depending on your cash flow situation, you know, some people it would be advantageous to have that category for, like you said, um, garbage, right? And let's say quarterly, it's $120, right? So public math is always scary. So $120, yeah. three months, okay. you know, 
40 bucks, right? Yep. So, so and yeah, okay. So then, <laughs> um, so just every month during the quarter, you're putting that $40 in. So when the bill is due, it's not a surprise and you're not having to come up with $120 in one month. You've only come up with $40 right. in all three of those months and then you just, you just pay it off. So that's another one of those things, you know, whatever works for you. Some people might have a good enough cash flow situation that they're just like, oh, okay, this $120 bill is due this month, boom, got it. But not everyone's necessarily there. They might need to split that into smaller pieces and then just be setting that aside. Um, which is one of the things that uh, YNAB does really well. Awesome. Awesome. So I got a question for you about YNAB. I've never used it. Um, you know, one of the things that a lot of these new tools are talking about, like Copilot and Monarch Money, is is the way that you can collaborate with like your spouse or something like that. YNAB, does that have the ability to to work with your spouse or how does that work? I know that it I know that it does because I've okay. researched it and told somebody else that it does. So I know it's possible. It. Um, my wife and I, we have LastPass and we just share the login. Got it. Okay, so, perfect. Um, that's one way to do it. But I, I know that it does where other people can have their own login for it. So. Got it. So you mentioned, um, we just briefly kind of grazed over um, this thing called the anti-budget. Let's say you... Budget scares you. You don't like to budget. You don't want to feel restricted in, in your spending and stuff like that. You work hard for your money, right? Yeah. So some people, they don't want to, they don't want to budget. And this is kind of a, a principle where first you decide kind of a percentage of like, this is the income that I want to save and invest. You basically are doing that first. And then right. you look at, you know, well, how much now are we going to put towards those bills and stuff. What are your thoughts on like the anti-budget or like the way that we look at that? And again, you mentioned it's kind of all the same anyway, right? Yeah. So the anti-budget I think works best for people who are maybe one of two situations. Either they're just naturally pretty frugal, so they're not worried about overspending, right? Or they have a very, very big income so that even though they spend on whatever that laissez-faire approach to how they're going to spend their money still doesn't meet with what their income is. Um, but I think if you're someone who isn't very frugal or has just like, you know, what typical, typical income, depending on where you're at in life, college student income, early professional income, um, it, you might need to be paying a little bit more attention. Cause so here's where I think the, a potential ten, potential hazard is with the anti-budget. Great that you've saved first. You know, you went through either your payroll system and you set up your 401k or you figured out a way to do some allotments that it goes automatically into an IRA or wh whatever you're deciding to do, right? That's good. But then if you're not following how much you're spending during the month, and especially a lot of people in the FI community and, and starting to get off and even outside of the FI community, everyone wants to get their points or their miles or something. So they're putting it on a credit card, right? Well, since that bill is not due until a month after the statement closes, you might have had 80% to spend, but you might have spent 85% or 90% because you're not paying attention to it. You're just like, oh, I saved, I get to spend the rest. But unless you're adding it up as you go, how much is the rest, <laughs> right? right? Which is why right. I say you're either naturally frugal or you make so much money that doesn't matter. But if you're kind of in that just typical, where I think most of us Americans are, you know, mm -hmm. just that kind of middle class, middle class income, you, you got to be paying attention to where it is. So that way, when your bill is due, you're not going, uh oh, <laughs> I I guess I have to live this month on sixty percent because I overspent last month, right. and it just then you're always trying to catch up with yourself and figure things out where the way I like to do it, you just budget, plan it ahead, put in your, uh, putting in your transaction as they go, you see where you're spending in real time, see where you're maybe spending, where you didn't realize you were spending that much. Like fast food is a big one for me. Oh, yep. I just raising canes. I, oh, <laughs> it's hard dude, to I love me to drop by raising canes. I'd be like, ah, I could do some chicken. You <laughs> that's know, right, just, that's right. it's so good. So it is. Um, 
And yeah, so you just end up spending this. But I can look at my category and be like, oh, you know what? I don't, I got this many weeks left. I need to not do that this month. So um, so the anti-budget, it's good for some people, um, but know thyself, right? You know, maybe maybe it's good for you. And don't trick yourself too, be honest. You know, it's like, no, I'm really good with my money. I've, I'm not going to spend over 80%. If you kind of know that you probably will, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, it's okay. Just be honest with yourself. And, or right. if you can do the 80%, at least track it to be like, okay, 80% was eight, easy math, right? Thousand dollars, 80%, 800 bucks. Don't worry about your categories. Just keep subtracting from that 800 so that you're like, okay, I'm my, my spending category is done until I get paid again. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like so, that. I think, um, if we look at some some ways that that we can help others continue to budget, if maybe if, even if they're just starting to budget, some some tips and tricks, and I think one of the most important things that we can do is talk with others. <laughs> you know, I think I think uh, like what we're doing here, right, the, that community, and it, it can seem awkward. A lot of people don't really like to talk about, you know, I, many people don't talk about how much they earn right? Or how much they're saving, that type of thing. But I really do believe it's true that you are the average of those five people you surround yourself with. So if you surround yourself with others that are keeping track of their finances, they're continuing to save, they budget wisely, and they're continuing to you know get out of debt and uh, investing in the future, eventually it kind of rubs off on you. It really does. And I, 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 I do, I'm a true believer of that. So if you can, and it get, I, I feel as though you want to surround with those people that help build you up versus kind of knock you down. And mm-hmm. that's, I think, one of the first tips that I would recommend is, you know, talk with others that, that are trying to do the same thing you are. Mm-hmm. Well, I think, too, if, if you keep a positive, positive mind about it, right, to even to the point where, let's, let's talk about like this. So, instead of telling people the things that you can't do and why things that you're going to do instead and, and, and why. So it's like, Oh, I can't go out to eat cause I'm, I'm on a budget and it's terrible and I can't spend any money. Be like, well, Hey, why don't we, you know, each bring a couple dishes over to my place. Cause I have this goal. I want to be able to get my car paid off or I want to be able to buy a new laptop or whatever. So I'm trying to save up some money for that. So why don't, why don't we do this thing instead? We still hang out have a good time and it just saves a little bit of money. Right. So yeah. it's, it's that more positive spin on it instead of being like, well, I can't go have fun with you guys. Cause you know, I'm in this stupid restrictive budget. Like, well, and cause then what that can maybe even tend to do is, is make it a little bit more normal to talk about money. We don't, when we talk about mm-hmm. money with people, it doesn't need to be super specific, like right to the penny. This is how my income is. And this is exactly what my rent is, which is kind of ballpark in it. You know, yep. it's just like, well, I've got money for this and not for that. Here's why, because I've got this financial goal coming up, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's detailed enough that everyone can be supportive and on the same page, but vague enough that you don't feel like you're putting yourself out there or, or they don't feel weird. Cause they're like, oh, you told me way too much about your financial life or whatever it is, you know? Yep. So, and, and I, I would often, um, even, I mean, this was really big when my kids, you know, my kids are older, they've, they've moved out. But again, if they're like, you know. Hey dad, what are you doing? Um, are you hungry? That's their, that's their code for like, can you take me out to eat? <laughs> and, uh, but again, it's one of those things where, you know, I will like, if it's on a Monday or Tuesday, I'm like, you know what? Not today. How about tomorrow? Cause I have a BOGO coupon, you know, buy one, get one coupon on Wednesdays or, yeah. you know, or Hey, Thursday, we can go here because I have a 20% off coupon or, you know what, let's wait until Friday because famous Dave's has this special going on. You know, it's, you are being a little more conscious of where to save the money, you know? Yeah. And, uh, that's, that's at least that helps me. And I still use it to this day on kind of dictates, Hey, where I'm going to go and <laughs> what I'm going to spend my money on. Yeah. Well, I love the idea of having that conversation with the kids too, because that just, Mm -hmm. that helps kind of teach those money habits going forward. Like with with our son, every now and again, we'll talk about the, like, can we go out to this dinner? Can we go do this thing? It's like, we can. However, this is the impact it's going to have on this other thing. You know, we can do that, but that means we have to give up this or, or vice versa. You know, it's just like, 
start to have those conversations of the trade-offs. It's just like, sure, we can go out to eat three times a week, but, or we could take a trip up North and, you know, go to a water resort or, or go out on a lake and just, and even using numbers, it's like this yeah. costs this much times three days a week. You see what that adds up to. It's like, Oh, I do. Yeah. And, and not to say living this, I really don't want to say it's like living a super restrictive life to where you're not having any fun. I don't mean it that way, mm -hmm. but it's more making those choices in one area so that you can do what's more important to you in, in another area. Right. It's because just pick what it is that you want to do. It's, it's, it's finding out what, what has more value to you, yeah, right? Exactly. Spend on what you value for sure. You know, one of Which, the things, Oh, go ahead. Okay. So I was just going to, I mentioned a couple of times about the month ahead budgeting that we get back to it and I don't want to forget yeah. to get back to it. So sure, well, this sure. is actually a good time to kind of talk about once you get to that point where, you know, you've, you've got some savings built up. Um, and then when I, when I work with people too, sometimes uh, depend on the circumstances, it's even, it's even before they get like a fully funded emergency fund. It's like, let's get a partially funded emergency fund and then save up one month of income. Because from that point, so and any month, right? And end of July comes up. Okay, we have X number of dollars. This is what our income was in July. Because all July, we were spending money we made in June, right? So now we're in July. We have all our income that we made in July. Make an August budget. And before August even happens, we can be, all right, this much goes to our mortgage, this much for groceries, this much for our, um, our fuel expenses, you know, for clothing, a couple of birthdays coming up, we need to buy a gift and just, shh, you just go all the way down the list, assign all your money out from your income. Speak, speaking no, of thing, speaking of things we forget about, freaking right. birthday gifts. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we even have a category that's just gift giving. It's just like, and then that reminds us to be like, okay, who has a birthday? Who's got an anniversary? Who has what coming up this month? Nobody. Great. 18 people. Holy cow. <laughs> this is a busy month. Um, okay. But yeah, and then you just go all the way down your categories, assigning out, this is that empowering part, because you're choosing for this next month, this is where we're going to spend all of our money in these different areas, right? Some of them we don't get to choose anymore, rent slash mortgage, you know, once you kind of get into a place, that's that's going to happen. But, right. um, you know, your dining out money, your groceries, your various things, maybe you're looking at your phone bill and be like, how much, is, how much should that phone bill be? Right. Is that high? You know, and then that just was... talking, how much do you spend? How much do you spend? Oh, I spend way too much on my phone bill, right? And then just be able to notice that and then make those changes. And then as the month goes along, you know, you can kind of see where you're overspending, underspending, and then you just change it along as you go. Yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, that's like just that. having that money where you're then, it's you're, you're choosing going into the next month. How is it you're going to spend the income that you made? It just like makes that. it, Makes it real simple. I like that. You know, a lot of people, again, including uh, um, a very popular uh, personal finance uh, personality, says cash is the only way to go, right? And and it's interesting because I also, again, I've heard other people say, you know, it's harder to spend cash. It's much easier to spend, um, you know, much easier to swipe a card than it is to, to spend cash. I want to know your opinion on when you use cash and when you don't and what is harder for you i will spend the heck out of some cash <laughs> <laughs> me too i treat it like free money <laughs> it's gone um so it's a it real that is another one of those things where what works what works for you right and yeah. i know for me if i have cash in my pocket i might as well not have cash in my pocket it's going to it's going to get spent and i think for me too is it's easy for me to spend cash because I don't have to enter my cash transactions into YNAB. Oh, I say I go to the around. ATM and take out 400 bucks, right? Okay. That's one transaction I'm putting in my budget, $400 cash transaction done. And now I can spend it here. I can spend it there. I can, and it's gone. Whereas, like whereas when I get up in the morning and I've got my coffee and like, all right, I'm going to enter him. If I didn't already do it yesterday, I'm going to enter in the purchases I made yesterday. And if it feels like it's taken me a really long time <laughs> to enter in those purchases, that's my light bulb moment of, right. I, whatever reason, I'm in a, a swipe 
swipe mode. You know, I'm just mm -hmm. buying this, buying that, buying that. I need it. Okay. Um, and then goes back to a talk that we had a couple months ago about that uh, resiliency topic, which maybe we'll, we'll put on one of these uh, uh, episodes at some point, right. but um, there's a, there's a part of resiliency called detecting icebergs, which is like, okay, I've had this behavior that I don't normally do. Let's go under the surface where most of the iceberg is right. And figure out why. And so if all of a sudden I'm putting in what feels like never ending list of expenses one morning, then I can say to myself, okay, is there, and maybe there's not, maybe it was just, it was a one-off, but I can actually take a few minutes to ask myself, is there something going on that's causing me to seek out a little bit of retail therapy? Like mm -hmm. what's, what's at play here? Is this normal? Right. Is this abnormal? Um, and then I can get those emotions going because of the card swiping that I did. Cause I had to enter it into my, my budget app as opposed to cash that just gets spent. And it's like, where did it go? I like, I don't know. I think for me, definitely cash is something that um, it's much easier for me to spend, but I also use it differently. I feel as though that's the freedom I can use for a Starbucks coffee or whatever. I mean, I, I had a, I had a garage sale um, this spring and I made about 500 bucks, right. Nice. Selling just a bunch of crap. But the great thing about that $500, I'm still going through the cash I made and I put, I put aside like another like 160 bucks already for like when I go to the Minnesota state fair and I'm like, this is what I'm using for all of the food that I'm going to buy at the state <laughs> fair. And it's already budgeted for, I don't yeah, have to worry done. about, I don't have to worry about what, like, you know, putting it on a credit card or whatever. So to me having that cash spending, it's almost a little more freeing to me, but yeah, there, you know what? That. There are, there are times though, there's places now where, you know, they just, they just don't take cash anymore. And, uh, Eventually, we're probably going to get there. I don't know. Uh, I've seen a couple of places just the last couple of days that you get the discount for using cash. So, you know, I think I think there'll still be a, a need for cash from time to time. So, but yeah. and but as far as which one's better, you know, for me, uh, cards are better. Um, but there are circumstances. I love the, the thoughts that you had there about you know having some cash and it just gives you a little bit of freeing if i go do this thing to have fun the whole point of it is to have fun the last thing you want to do is have that stress of am i spending too much money it's not right. the point but that's also the point of budgeting too is like we're up here on vacation for four or five days we're spending money from our vacation fund that's Love it. that's the whole reason why that vacation budget line is there so we can come up here and not go hmm <laughs> that's is, awesome. can we buy this thing can we buy that? it's like yeah it's it's already done yeah. Can I ask you, so vacation fund, so I have one for vacation too, and I was going to ask you, so do you allocate a percentage all the time or do you just put like certain windfalls into that vacation fund? How do you fund that throughout the year or? Um, we tend to just have the same amount every month that we put in okay. there. Um, that's a fairly new thing that we've been doing within the past maybe two years or so. Okay. So that could, you know, evolve over time, you know, as frankly, I think as we get better at planning a vacation and say, all right, well, here's where we're going next summer. And then it's going to cost X dollars. We only need to save this much per month instead of, I mean, I don't think we're at that point yet. And hopefully everyone listening to this can where you're like, Oh, oops, I over budgeted for my vacation, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but it tends to be just a, a, a set number. That being said, um, it also does act, well, it hasn't had to act, but it is there, right? Uh-oh, something happened. It's a big enough of an issue that I need to get it fixed, but it's more of an inconvenience. I don't want to pull it from my emergency fund because the emergency fund to me is sacred. You know, it's just mm -hmm. over there doing its thing. Right. It's not quite emergency fund worthy. Is it something where we we have that money just sitting there in a, in a savings account that's quote unquote for vacation, but it's for vacation 12 months from now. So, right. you know, we can use that as a little bit of a, of a buffer. So, yeah. um, and then it's as easy as just clicking it from one category into the other, and then you're good to go. So it's, it doesn't have to be so rigid as people, I think, think it has to be maybe at first, depending on where you're at, you know, 
might need to be rigid to get started. And, but I think anybody can get to the point where it's not. Yeah, I like that. And I'm going to share a little tip just uh, so you can feel as though it's not as restrictive. So I have a I have a vacation budget, but then I also have a personal development budget. And I'll use that personal development budget. Um, and that's like something I got from uh, Brian Tracy. Um, those of you that that uh, know Brian Tracy, a great, great author, public speaker, tons of content online. But I know that he said something about spending a percentage of your annual income just on improving yourself. So I started doing that a long time ago. It was five years ago. And that would be, again, a class, a course, a book. So all my like audio books, pretty much every other book I have is like nonfiction, like self-help. But I've also begun to realize too that some of the line blurs between going to a conference that is in a great place, well, maybe your vacation would come out of your personal development budget. So it, they can blur a little bit. And uh, sure. I've I've kind of moved those two uh, funds around a little bit, depending on where I'm going and what I'm doing, right? So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, but those are things that you've planned for over time. And so you've saved up that money over time. So really, regardless of which yep. line of the budget you're taking it from, it's not a, you don't have to feel any guilt over going and spending that money on yourself slash on a vacation because it's, that was the whole point of it to begin with. So it's there for that. So. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. Love it. Well, I think that's going to, you know, get close to wrapping up. I know I just want to leave one last uh, little nugget saying, please don't get discouraged uh, a budget will change over time. And uh, I'm going to turn over to you, Dan. Any last words of wisdom of, of someone that's just starting to budget or is frustrated with budgeting today? And I was like, what could they do um, to kind of help keep them on track? Well, to to what you mentioned, you know, things are going to change over time, is going even a little bit even before then is know that it's going to change over time. So just be willing to start. Don't be afraid of it. You know, it's, and just about anybody else who's done the budgeting thing has been there before. So you're not alone. There's, there's Facebook pages out there. There's forums out there. There's podcasts out there. Go find a couple of people that are doing what you're trying to do and either get some mentorship or get some peers that are on the same journey you are. And, you know, just have that little, have that solace of not having to be alone, you know, and just get started. It's, just get started. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I really do appreciate everyone listening. Thank you so much. Uh, again, we really do encourage you to uh, like, subscribe, hit the little bell, get notifications when new episodes drops, all of the things. Subscribe where you get your podcasts. I got to learn all of this lingo on how to do this. But <laughs> Some people make it sound so easy. <laughs> I, I know. Um, thank you so much. And we're going to see you next time on the Extreme Personal Finance Show. Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.